Welcome you to the Grace Union Evangelism Program. We're so glad uh, to be joining with you today and glad that you've tuned in with us. And we're looking forward to a great time this morning as we worship the Lord and lift up His mighty name and declare and herald and proclaim the mighty Word of God. And so glad to have <clears throat> Brother Dolly Jesse in here with us uh, once again this morning. I told him we got here. I had not seen him since... Last year. Last year. And uh, so glad that he's here with us this morning. I appreciate my brother and love him. And uh, he hasn't got any prettier since last year. <laughs> but uh, but he's a wonderful friend. I appreciate him and brother in Christ. And uh, this morning, Brother Donnie, you, you mentioned be preaching this morning. At, uh, go ahead and tell a little bit about that and share and testify. Praise whatever you want to do. Well, yeah, we'll be ministering this morning out here at the... What well, used to be the Bread of Life Church on Cedar Flat Curtis Road. I can't recollect the name of it now. Out there at the old BFW Club. We'll be out there at 11 o'clock this morning. If you're in the neighborhood and then want to drop in, we'd be glad to have you this morning. Amen. And as I was uh, sitting out there this morning, I got to, a, a scripture just popped in my mind uh, this morning over in the book of uh, Proverbs. If I can find it right quick. Yeah. Proverbs 27, uh, 1, I believe it is. Because, you know, uh, we go on living our life like we got plenty of time. Yeah. We go on living it every day like we've got time, we've got day, tomorrow, and then tomorrow, and tomorrow. But the Bible says here in Proverbs 27, 1, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what... A day may bring forth. Amen. And you know, as I was thinking on that, and it also tells us over in the book of James, in chapter 4, verse 13, it says, Go to now, you that say today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get game. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanishes away. Right. You know, baby brothers, I get to think, and the older I get, I know that I've got less days left on this earth. Yeah. And you know, we yeah. don't, and what these scriptures here is trying to tell us and get us to really at last is, is we don't have a promise of tomorrow. That's right. We don't have a promise of our next break. Amen. We keep putting off eternity. We keep putting off. You know, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. That's right. That's and you know, I'm here to tell you today, if the Holy Spirit is dealing with your heart and life, that you need to be saved, don't keep putting it off. That's don't right. keep putting it off tomorrow, because one of these days, that tomorrow won't never come. And you know that there's just one of two places that we're going to spend eternity and that's heaven, rejoicing with the saints and with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. But we'll be burning in a devil's hell for an eternity. That's right. And that's the choice right. is up to you. Now, we can't, a lot of times we use other people, well, I don't go to church because of this, and I don't go to church because of that. Yeah. Let me to ask you a question this morning. If you go out here and murder somebody, does somebody else stand before you, before the judge, to answer for the crime that you have committed? No, you stand there before the judge, before yourself, to be convicted of the crime that you have committed. committed. It works the same way in our spiritual lives. Whenever we die and we go into an eternity, we stand before God, our judge, all by ourselves. That's right. The excuses we use aren't going to amount to a hill of beans. That's right. why we need to realize today is that day of salvation. And our heart's desire for you is just like Jesus is. Jesus said that he is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. Jesus Christ loves you, yes. and he wants you to know the love of him. Find you a church, get in God's house somewhere, and give your heart and life to Christ. It's our prayer today. Amen. Praise the Lord. There's no greater decision that anyone could ever make than to make Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior, the Master Amen. of your life. Amen. Everybody, I'm glad one Sunday morning, and Maybe a lot of folks get tired of hearing it, but it never gets old to me. And right. you've been Amen. saved. Your testimony should never get old to you. You ought to just praise Him, and your salvation experience ought to be just as fresh today as it was the day that you got saved. As an old song says, I never got over the day that I got under that precious blood of Jesus Christ, and it washed away 
every sin and even the very stain of sin. I'm glad that I've been born again, washed in that precious blood. I've not been redeemed and set free and purchased with corruptible things such as silver and gold, but by the precious blood of a lamb that was without spot, without blemish. Amen. Jesus Christ is the Redeemer. He's the Deliverer. He's the Savior. And that's what we're here today to try to proclaim and declare Amen. to you. You that are listening are the reason that we do what we do. You're the reason that we come and declare the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Several years ago, the Lord spoke to us to come on to this radio program, this radio station. And, and I know there's a lot of programs out there today, but and yeah, there's a lot of them that's a whole lot better than this one and a lot of Preachers that are a whole lot better than me that can stand and they can paint a picture, a beautiful picture of the good news of Jesus Christ. Yeah. But our calling is, you know, we got our own position, our yeah. own identity uh, right. in the kingdom of God. And we want to come because we love you and we come this way to Amen. declare to you there's only one way. The Bible says there's a way that seemeth right unto man, That's but right. the end thereof are the ways of death. Yeah. They, there's a lot of folks today that think they've got it all figured out. They think they, they've, they've produced their own way and they've come up with their own ideas yeah. and their own way. But the Bible declares that there's only one man that's ever been able to stand Amen. and say, I am the way. Amen. Hallelujah. I am the truth and I am the life. And that man is Jesus Christ. And he has not changed. That's he right. is still the only way. And today, as Brother Donnie said, if you want to make your entrance into the kingdom of heaven, there's only one door. And Jesus said, I am that door. And if any man mm -hmm. enter in, hallelujah, he shall have life everlasting. Jesus is that door. Amen. And you can come through that door today Amen. and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Somebody would say, well, does that mean my life? will be perfect. No, it no. certainly doesn't. No. There was another man in the Bible, a wonderful man of God who had the revelation of most of the new covenant. His name was Paul. Yeah. We talked about him last Sunday. He was saved and born again. But he said, I have not count myself to have apprehended that perfection. But he said, this one thing I do, and it ought to be your desire today. One thing that you ought to desire to do and that's forget about those things Things of the right. past uh, and reach forth yeah. to those things that are before you. Amen. God has so much for you today uh, if you'll reach out and Amen. press toward that mark uh, of the prize of the high That's calling right. of That's God right. in Christ Jesus. Amen. That's the spiritual target that we ought to be shooting for and aiming for today. That you saved and born again is to be more like Christ. Uh, yeah. To live a life that is pleasing to Him. Amen. Paul, that same man, would say in Romans chapter 12, be not conformed to this That's world. Right. Don't be molded to the That's things right. and the ways right. of this world, but be ye transformed right. by the Lord, renewing of your mind Amen. that you may prove what is that That's good right. and perfect and acceptable, well-pleasing before God today. We are living our lives, a living sacrifice today before Amen. Almighty God. Amen. He loves you today, yes, and I'm glad He loves me. Hallelujah. When I was unlovable, He loved Amen. me. Yeah. Hallelujah. And it seemed like uh, I was unsavable. Uh, he reached down one yeah. Sunday morning and saved me. Uh, yeah. And today I want you to know, uh, no matter the depths of sin you might be in, uh, the Bible says his arm is not shortened. That's he right. can't reach down Amen. and pull you out of that horrible pit uh, that you're in today. Uh, we want you to know we love each and every one of you. And we pray God's uh, richest blessings upon Amen. you. Uh, and we just pray today if you've not been saved, uh, you ought to try them today. Uh, maybe you tried everything else, tried everything this world has to offer. Amen. You know, the world has a well uh, that you can go to. Jeremiah said it's a broken cistern. Uh, it can't hold water. Uh, but the world has this well and you'll keep going back and Amen. back uh, because you think that the pleasures that you're in uh, will satisfy that longing and that craving, and it'll fill that empty void in your heart. But Jesus said you keep going back to that well, yeah. and you'll keep going back and keep going back, because you're trying to find 
something that will bring joy and satisfaction. Uh, but are you looking in the wrong place? Right. And you're going to the wrong well. Uh, and Jesus said, if you'll drink of this well, uh, drink of this water that I right. shall give you. Uh, Jesus is that well. Hallelujah. That water is the Holy Spirit. Uh, he said, if you'll drink of that well and out of that well and that water, uh, you'll never thirst Amen. again. Uh, right. But I have a living testimony, Brother Donnie. Amen. Your living Amen. testimony and a witness. Uh, if you'll drink of that well that God has prepared, uh, my friend, you'll never thirst again for the things uh, of this world. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible tells me, David wrote and said in Psalms that God is great uh, yeah. and he's greatly to be praised. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people say, how can you praise him like you do? Uh, how can you have so much joy? Uh, well, because God gave it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's joy everlasting. Uh, Peter said it's joy unspeakable yeah. and full of glory. Yeah. Yeah. It's a glorified joy that we have today, uh, all of God's children, uh, because I know today well enough to know God uh, has not get, designed us to live in defeat, uh, but he's made us to be more than conquerors, uh, and we overcome by the blood of the Lamb uh, and Amen. the word of this testimony. Amen, right. And so today, uh, we can have victory in Jesus. That's, right. That's the only place to have uh, that victory That's is right. in him. Hallelujah. Amen. And this morning, uh, we love you and we pray uh, that someday we may never know who's listening. We may never see you uh, in, in this life, but I pray that one day we can meet you someday after a while uh, in Amen. that glorious city, that heavenly new city, that new Jerusalem someday. Uh, and we can meet you and greet you over there when we get there Amen. because that you've given your heart and life to the yeah. Lord uh, and you've been saved and you've forsaken the ways yeah. of the world uh, and you turn your back on the things of the world. Uh, right. uh, let me tell you something today. Uh, you can't love God with all your heart uh, yeah. and then have some of the world inside of Amen. you. Uh, my Amen. friend, you got to accept Him uh, with your whole heart uh, and live with Him with your whole, for Amen. With your whole heart. Live for Him uh, today. Heavenly hallelujah. Let me say today, uh, if you have your Bibles, just get ready to turn to the book of Matthew. Chapter 21, Matthew chapter 21, we're going to read uh, some scriptures today and minister as God uh, has, has given us the word for this Amen. morning in Matthew chapter 21, uh, hallelujah. Uh, baby Wait, brother, yeah. uh, one other thing, Lord, right. put on my heart, Mike, yeah. so I'm speaking, just come to be clear. You was telling the people here, out here that, you know, they're the reason why we come in here and do this, and then that is the reason. But you know, there's one other thing I want you to know too. Yeah. That you are also the reason that Jesus came yes. and died on the cross. For Amen. Our sins. That's he loved you that much. And Praise I hope you Lord. realize that today. Amen. Boy, I tell you, that's wonderful, Brother Donnie. That's just going to lead us right in to this word from the Lord this morning. Uh, Praise God. Isn't it wonderful when God gives you a word? Hallelujah. Amen. When when a word comes from God. Yeah. Hallelujah. And that's the reason Jesus came in Matthew chapter 21 this morning. And down in verse 32. And while you're turning there, I want to take this opportunity to invite you to any or all of our services at Grace Union Baptist Church this morning. We'll be having Sunday school at 10 o'clock and our worship service begins at 11. We're going to have a great time in the Lord as we do every service when the Spirit of God, the power of God begins to pour out and God begins to move upon the singing and the music and He moves upon the preaching of His Word. And this morning we invite you to come out and be with us this morning. And also this evening we'll be gathering back at 5.30 for our Sunday evening worship service. And let me encourage you, don't make just Sunday Sunday morning uh, time that you come to church. Uh, you ought to love the Lord enough that you want to be. Uh, you know, God has designed it and made a way uh, that we gather on the Lord's day uh, and we set aside a time. There's a reason uh, that church attendance is important. It's not just Amen. that we can have numbers uh, on the roll, but it's that God made it to where that we can be strengthened when we come and we can hear the instructions of the Lord uh, as we come to church. Uh, 
And so this morning, uh, we'll be there, Sunday school at 10, worship service at 11, this evening at 5.30, and we have Wednesday night Bible study at 6.30, and we invite you to come out and be with us in any and all of these services this morning. Uh, I want to read these scriptures that God has given, and then we're going to have a time of prayer this morning. Matthew chapter 21, down in verse 32, Jesus uh, is speaking these words. He said for John, he's talking about John the Baptist. John came unto you in the way of righteousness. Now, Jesus is speaking to the religious leaders, the, the religious, religious leaders of Israel in that day. And he said, John the Baptist came unto you preaching in the way of righteousness. And you believed him not, but the publicans and the harlots believed him. You yeah. see, I want you to understand today, Jesus is a friend of the sinner. Yeah. He's a friend to you today. Somebody said, well, I'm so far in the depths of sin, and I've committed such horrible acts of unrighteousness and sin. Well, let me tell you, that doesn't separate you from the love. Of, of Jesus Christ today. He sat down. He didn't participate with the sinners, but he sat down with them and he ate with the publicans and the yeah, sinners. Amen. And the Bible says that the religious leaders who should have known the way of God, who should have known the righteousness of God, refused and rejected Jesus Christ. And they rejected the message of John the Baptist. But the worst of the worst and the sinners, they believed lead upon him and they were saved and born again. And Jesus said in you, when you had seen it, you repented not afterward that you might believe him. You see, those ones that were despised by the Jewish leaders and the religious leaders, those that they cast it out, they were saved and they were born again. But the self-righteous wouldn't come to him. And Jesus said these words in verse 33. He said, I want you to hear another parable. He said, there was a certain householder which planted a vineyard uh, and he hedged it round about and dug a wine press in it and he built a tower and let it out uh, or rented it out to husbandmen uh, to farmers and went into a far country and when the time of the fruit drew near he sent his servants to the husbandmen uh, that they might receive the fruits of it. And the husbandman took his servants uh, and they beat one and they killed another Amen. and they stoned another. And again he sent other servants more than the first uh, and they did unto them likewise. But last of all uh, he sent unto them his son saying surely they will reverence my son. But when the husbandman uh, saw the son they said among themselves this is the air. Come, let us kill him, and let us seize on his inheritance. And they caught him, and cast him out of the vineyard, and slew him. And when the Lord therefore of the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto these husbandmen? And this morning I want to minister on a thought today. Last of all, he sent his son. Last of all, God sent his son. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning in the mighty name that is above every name, the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we're so grateful and thankful today for all your goodness. We're so thankful today for your mercy and your grace. I'm thankful today for that love, that perfect love that casteth out fear, that love, Lord, that came down to Calvary's cross some 2,000 years ago, that we could be saved and set free and born again, Lord, and Lord, that we could be redeemed from our sins, that we could receive this unspeakable gift of salvation, and God, today, we're thankful for that grace and mercy has been bestowed upon humanity. And Lord, when we were lost in the way, when we were alienated from your presence, that God, you made a way that we could have the chains could be broken. Lord, we, you made a way that the prison doors could be open. And God, we could be free and free indeed. And Lord, today we ask you to move upon those right now that are listening, God. Those, Lord, that are battling infirmity 
things in their bodies, uh, those that are physically sick, and so many that we have on our heart and mind right now that are dealing with struggles in their life. Uh, Lord, we pray uh, that you'll send down that divine healing upon their body. Uh, and God, that you would move in a mighty way right there where they are. Uh, and Lord, most of all, we lift up those that are Lord, dealing with it, that need a spiritual healing this morning. Uh, that God, those that are unsaved, uh, that are lost without you, uh, that are outside, Lord, of your presence and outside of your will, uh, that this morning maybe something will be said or uh, done, Lord, uh, that would bring conviction upon their heart. But we know, Lord, man cannot be saved uh, except they be drawn to you through the Holy Spirit. Uh, and Lord, we know that your word says uh, in Romans 10 that faith uh, comes by hearing uh, and hearing by the word uh, that is from you. Uh, and so this morning, God, uh, we ask you that your presence would overshadow us today. Uh, and God, that you would empower us uh, to preach thy mighty word today. Uh, and we give you the praise uh, and the honor and the glory for it all. Uh, in Jesus' mighty name, uh, hallelujah. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. He said, God said, I am the God that healeth thee. He is the God today that can heal you. Whether it be a physical healing or whether it be a spiritual healing. Hallelujah. This morning we're ministering on the thought last of all. He said his son. Jesus is speaking this parable of the householder. We know it is the parable of the householder. And it's in this parable that Jesus said uh, that this certain man, uh, he owned a vineyard. Uh, that certain man Jesus is speaking of represents God Almighty, uh, represents God the Father. And why the, the vineyard uh, represents Israel. Uh, the Bible says that Jesus came unto his own, the Jewish yeah. nation, Israel, uh, and his own received him not. Uh, the Bible said Jesus said this vineyard. Uh, that was provided. It was provided with everything that that vineyard needed. The Bible says uh, that, that 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 owner, uh, he put a hedge round about mm -hmm. it. Uh, yeah. In other words, he put his protection upon it. Uh, not only that, but he built a tower uh, and he let it out the husbandman. Uh, he built that tower where the, God said, I placed over uh, you watchmen uh, that will stand up on the watchtower yeah. and they'll be your watchmen and they'll herald out the warnings uh, when the enemy shall come. Uh, and the Bible said the owner of this vineyard, uh, God Almighty, uh, that he rented it out to husbandmen. Uh, he rented it out to farmers. Uh, and these husbandmen, they represented these religious leaders uh, that we talked about a while ago. Uh, the religious leaders of Israel. Uh, and the Bible says that when the harvest season, uh, when that harvest season came, uh, that the owner had sent three servants uh, to collect the rent. Uh, and the Bible the Bible said, Jesus said, uh, that these servants, they, they represent the prophets uh, that came. Uh, but instead of collecting the rent, uh, those servants were beaten, the Bible said. Uh, those servants were killed uh, by the farmers and by the husband. Uh, and then the next time, uh, the owner, he increased the number of servants that he sent uh, to go. Uh, and the Bible said, when these servants came, uh, they received the same treatment. Yeah, uh, they yeah, were beaten and yeah. some were killed. Uh, and so finally uh, the owner said uh, I'm going to send my son. Yeah, yeah. Surely they'll reverence him yeah. being that he's my son. Yeah. Surely they'll reverence him yeah. and they'll listen to him. Uh, and so uh, when he came uh, they, the Bible said when they saw the son coming uh, the Bible says they seized him uh, and they beat him uh, and they brutally put him to death. Uh, and look at what Jesus said in verse 4 here. He said, when the Lord therefore the vineyard comes, uh, what will he do unto those husbandmen? Uh, and they say unto him, uh, he will miserably destroy those wicked men. Uh, you see, they had brought judgment upon yeah. themselves, these yeah. religious leaders. Why? Because they were answering uh, the answer to the question 
and they're speaking uh, of themselves. Uh, and the Bible said they answered and said he will let rent out his vineyard unto other husbands, unto other farmers, uh, which shall render him the fruits uh, in the season. Uh, and that's exactly what happened. Hallelujah. Because uh, the Jews uh, rejected Jesus Christ when he came. Uh, and John said in John chapter 1, uh, Hallelujah. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But unto them, as many as received him, to them gave him power and authority to become the sons of God. Let me tell you something today, my friend. God sent one prophet after another to the nation of Israel, to this world. The Bible tells me that first of all, he sent a man by the name of Noah into this world. God looked down upon this earth and he seen the imagination and the thoughts of each person upon this earth was wicked and vile. And so God, the Bible says, he regretted ever even making man. But God had a divine plan, hallelujah. And he sent Noah. The Bible says Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And the Bible tells me that Noah was was a preacher of righteousness yeah. and when Noah stepped on the scene and God raised Noah up and sent him the Bible says that God told him Noah I want you to build me an ark hallelujah because I'm going to send a flood upon the earth and it's going to destroy everything in this earth and God said but I'm making a way of deliverance let me tell you my friend Jesus is the ark to Day, uh, and all that come into that ark uh, are going to be rescued. Uh, they're going to be saved from the judgment to come. Uh, and God was going to send his wrath and his judgment upon this earth. Uh, he was going to destroy it by the way uh, of a flood. Uh, oh, let me tell you something. God's going to do it again. Uh, this time it won't be by water, but it's going to be by fire, the Bible says. Uh, but all oh, that get in the ark, uh, hallelujah, you're going to leave out glory to God. And the Bible says as Noah preached for 120 years, he preached a message of righteousness. Meaning you get right with God. Get things right with the Lord. And live the righteous life. But you know what they did to Noah? They laughed at him and they persecuted him. They made fun of the preacher as he preached the righteousness and no doubt men and women on the face of the earth at that time were trying to go about to establish their own righteousness but Noah preached the righteousness of God and let me tell you that ark God gave every dimension of that boat and it was big enough to carry all and whosoever that would call upon the name of the Lord and I'm telling you today just as the old song says, uh, even though millions have come to the foot of the cross, uh, there's still room for one. Uh, God sent Noah, and he preached the message of righteousness. Uh, but the people rejected him and made fun of him. Uh, and Jesus said, as it was uh, in the days of Noah, so shall it be when the coming uh, of the Son of Man shall appear. Uh, today they're making fun of the preachers. Uh, they're making fun of those who stand with the holy boldness and declare the mighty word of God. But there'll come a day when the laughing will cease and the mocking will cease yes. and they'll make fun no more. Why? Because the ark has come through and when Noah ate, there was eight of them that got in the ark. And when they got in the ark, God said it was time. They got in that boat and the Bible says God shut the door. And when God shuts the door. No man can open it. And they knew not until the flood came. God sent Noah, sent him to the house of Israel. Yeah. But they rejected the message of Noah. And God sent another man, hallelujah, to the house of Israel. A man by the name of Moses. Man, they'd lived wicked ever since the fall of man. they lived a life that was not pleasing before God. And God was not please, uh, but thank you for his love, hallelujah, thank you for his grace and mercy, God always 
made a way. He always provided a way. God had a plan. And I'm so thankful that I was included in that plan. Brother Bobby was included in that plan. And you right there where you are, you were included in God's great plan. Somebody said, well, how can he let me? Oh, I can't explain to you the love of God. It's something that's unsearchable. It's inexpressible. But I know that it's real. Hallelujah. If God didn't love you, if God didn't love me, he didn't wipe us off the face of this planet. But he loves us today so much that he sent his only begotten son. And whosoever believeth upon him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Man continued on in their sin and rejecting the word of God. And so Noah came in and he went through and now he passed on. Oh, but then God sent another man by the name of Moses. And Moses stepped on the scene. Moses said, Lord, who did I tell him that sent me? And God said, you tell him who I am that sent you. Hallelujah. The great I am is still the I am. Hallelujah. God said, Moses, take your shoes off. You're standing on holy ground. God spoke to him on the backside of the desert, out of that burning bush. And God sent Moses, and he sent the law. And the people still went on with their sins. And God, through Moses, sent the idea of a blood sacrifice. Hallelujah. And through that sacrifice of the blood of bulls and goats, Hallelujah. God made a way. And see, the law could never deliver. The law only manifested sin. The law only made sin evident. It made man aware of our condition and our natural state. The law was like a mirror when you looked into it. It portrayed who we really are. And so God sent his standard, the law, through Moses. And the people still went on with their sins. But Moses would come with the message. I think about Deuteronomy 28. God was telling the people through Moses. Moses said, it shall come to pass if you hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. And you observe and do all his commandments which I command you this day. That the Lord thy God will set you on high above all nations of the earth. You see, it's all about obedience. And God is saying through the prophet Moses, if you obey my word, if you obey my commandments, and Jesus went on over in the new covenant, and Jesus put it this way. He said, if you love me, if you love me, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's the word of God today. And the, the Bible says that Moses Moses said, as God sent him down to the vineyard, down to Israel, Moses said, if you'll obey and hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord, God will set you on high. He said, all these blessings, I don't know about you today, I want to be under the showers of blessings, as Ezekiel said. I want to live under the blessing of God. I want to be obedient to Him and live a life of obedience. And God said through Moses, down there in the middle of that vineyard preaching, and all these blessings shall come on you, and not shall not only shall they come on you, but these blessings will overtake you if you only hearken unto the voice Amen. of the Lord thy God. In other words, these blessings they'll overtake you, they'll chase you down. I wonder if I can get a witness this morning who would lift up their hand and praise the Lord and say those blessings have chased me down. Hallelujah. God sent Moses down there. And Moses got up uh, in the middle of the vineyard and he preached 
He said, blessed you shall be in the city and blessed you shall be in the field. And no matter where the blessings will come, they'll just come right there where you are. And blessed shall be the fruit of that body that your children, they'll be blessed and your crops will be blessed and your herds will be blessed. And he said, blessed shall be thy basket and thy storehouse. Oh, I like that this morning. The storehouses will be full if you'll only obey me, God said. He said, not only that, but you'll be blessed coming in. And you'll be blessed when you go out. Hallelujah. God is saying, if you just be obedient to me, there'll be no limit to the blessings. I want you to know this morning, God's got a storehouse for you. And if you live for him and, and heed to his word and live a life that is well pleasing, the blessings, the limitless blessings of God will chase you down. And Moses came through. But even as God sent Moses down to the vineyard, they still rejected him. And even though they would bring the blood and present it upon the altar of sacrifice, that blood would only cover sin. It wouldn't wash it away under the old covenant. And the writer of the book of Hebrews, he said as they come every year through to make their sacrifices, it never could wash sin away. The law couldn't wash sin away. The old law, it couldn't set you free. It couldn't deliver you. Hallelujah. And every year when they came to offer the sacrifice, Hebrews said it would be just a remembrance. It would be a reminder. But I'm glad today that it's not by the blood of bulls and goats. Why? Because God has sent His Son. Hallelujah. John the Baptist said, the whole the Lamb of God had taken away the sin of the world. When I got saved, honey, my past sin was washed yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't just covered over. Yeah. It was washed away. And even though many a man has tried to bring up my past, and many a man has said, I can't do what I'm doing, God says you can. Yeah, he says, what sins are you talking yeah, about? Yeah. I don't remember them anymore. Hallelujah. Yeah. And Moses came through. God sent Moses down to the vineyard. And he came through and he went out. But God still had a plan. Hallelujah. And God raised up Joshua to come through. To lead the children on over into the yeah. promised land. And God told Joshua. Hallelujah. God said to Joshua. He said every place that your foot trods. That's going to be your possession. Yeah. Oh hallelujah. Every place that the sole of your foot steps on. He said that. That's where I've given you. Everywhere you walk, it's going to be your possession. God has a possession for every one of his children today. Yeah. He said this. He said, only be thou strong and courageous uh, that you may observe and do according uh, to all the law uh, and which Moses my servant commanded you uh, he said turn not from it to the right uh, or to the left uh, that you may prosper uh, wherever that you go uh, and the same thing goes for us today uh, and so God sent Joshua down there uh, into the vineyard uh, and Joshua came in and Joshua came out uh, and so he went in. Hallelujah. And he came out of the vineyard. Oh, but then God would raise up his prophets. And they would go down to the vineyard. And they would preach the word of God. And so here comes Isaiah in. Isaiah told more about Jesus than any other Old Testament prophet. When he stood up in Isaiah 53, it was just as if he was standing at the foot of the cross. When Jesus was hanging there and his blood was pouring out and water was pouring out and the crown of thorns was upon his head and Isaiah came down. God had a plan. God provided a way for the lost sheep of Israel. He made a way in the vineyard. Hallelujah. And he sent Isaiah down there to preach and Isaiah would stand and say, he said everyone that is thirsty Come ye to the waters. Hallelujah. Why? Because there's been a way made. There's been a way provided. Hallelujah. He said.
said. He said, though your sins be a scarlet, you can be washed in the precious blood of the Lamb, and they shall be white as snow. Isaiah came in, and Isaiah came out. Hallelujah. And God made a way, and they would persecute Isaiah. They would talk about him, and they would laugh at him, and they would reject this message. But he made the prophecy. Hallelujah. And the Bible would say in Isaiah 61, and Jesus would get up in the synagogue in Luke chapter 4, and he would make thought that proclaim this prophecy that the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to the bind of the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn and to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion down here in this vineyard to give unto them beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified Isaiah would preach again the prophet down in the vineyard in Isaiah 66 he said thus saith the Lord the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool where is the house that you build up to me and where is the place of my rest he said there's no earthly temple there's no earthly building that can contain my presence and Paul would say down there at Mars Hill he would say that the Lord doesn't dwell in buildings made of stone. For in Christ we live and move and have our being. Praise God. The devil's trying to choke me out, Brother Donnie. Hallelujah. But greater is he that's in me than he that is Amen. in the world. Isaiah would come in. And Isaiah would go out, uh, and so God would send another servant along to the vineyard. Uh, Isaiah came out. Here come Jeremiah in. Uh, Jeremiah was a man, the, we the weeping prophet. Uh, he would come in tears, uh, preaching to the people. Uh, I've always heard it said, uh, and I've never seen it myself in the studies that I've done through Lamentations and through the what Jeremiah wrote in the book of Jeremiah, that anyone ever accepted the word of the Lord that came through uh, this servant, this prophet. Uh, but God told Jeremiah, he said, I'm raising you up. I'm ordaining you and appointing you that you're going to be over the nations and over the kingdoms. Amen. I'm sending you this day, hallelujah, to root out, to pull down, destroy and throw down, and then to build and to plant. Jeremiah would come in and he would preach the word of God, the weeping prophet, but they would be him. They would put him in prison. They would brutally attack him. Even his own family would come against him. And there was a time when Jeremiah would say, Oh, oh, it's me. Lord, I've done this work for you. I've declared your mighty word, but they've all come against me here in this vineyard. And he said, I'm even going to fold up and I'm not going to speak anymore. The word of God. I'm telling you preacher, you gotta keep on preaching. Amen. Amen. All, all the Noahs out there, you gotta keep on building. Amen. You gotta keep on preaching. Don't give up. You gotta make a search down in your Amen. heart. And when you do, you'll find the same thing. Jeremiah found that there's a, a fire that is shut up Amen. in my Amen. bones. God said, Jeremiah through. Hallelujah. And Jeremiah preached to the people. Amen. Oh, praise God. Praise God. God. And then, hallelujah, the people would reject these prophets. They would beat them, yeah. and they would kill them. And so God kept, hallelujah, devising the plan. And then he would send Malachi. He's the last mm -hmm. prophet we read yeah. about Amen. in the Old Testament. And God would raise up Malachi. And by this time, Israel was so defiled and so away from God. They had not become nothing but religious. 
just like the religious leaders Jesus was yeah, speaking to in Matthew 21. But Malachi would rise up and Malachi would say in chapter 1 verse 6, he said a son honors his father and a servant his master. And God said if I then be a father, where is my honor? You see we honor everybody else in this world. Yeah, we yeah. honor the president. We honor the governor. We honor the leaders. And we honor all these folks. But God says where is my honor? He said and if I be a master, where is my fear? Where is my reverence? And the Bible says, he said oh priest, to the religious he said that despise my name. And you say wherein have we despised thy name? And he said, you've come in and you've offered polluted bread upon yeah. my altar. God has said, I made a way. Hallelujah, that your sins could be covered by the blood sacrifice. Hallelujah, but God said, you polluted that bread upon the altar. You defiled it. And you say, wherein have we polluted thee? And God said, in that you say, the table of the Lord is contemptible. And he said, if you offer the blind for sacrifice. Is it not evil? He said, and if you offer the lame and the sick, is it not evil? He said, offer it now to your governor. Will he be pleased with you or accept your person, says the Lord of hosts. And he said, and now I pray you, beseech God uh, that he will be gracious unto us uh, that has been by your means uh, hallelujah will he regard your person says the Lord uh, of hosts uh, in other words shall God show favor uh, he's, he's telling them to plead for mercy uh, unto him he said who is there even among you uh, that would shut the doors for naught or shut the doors of the temple for nothing uh, he said neither do you kindle fire on my altar for naught. He said, I have no pleasure in you, says the Lord of hosts. Neither will I accept an offering at your hand. For from the rising of the sun, even to the going down of the same, God said, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. And in every place incense shall be offered unto my name. And a pure offering, hallelujah, let me tell you, God sent the servants. He sent the prophets into the vineyard and they would reject not the prophets they didn't reject the servants right. but they rejected God Praise himself God. hallelujah but God said I've got a great plan I'm devising a plan hallelujah and then after Malachi he comes in and goes out and then about 400 years of silence where the voice of God is not heard for yeah. 400 years and all of a sudden here comes one that steps up in on the scene. Amen. Here comes one that walks through the vineyard. And he has a message of repentance. And he comes in. His name is John the Baptist. Amen. He's out there in the Jordan River. He's out there baptizing. He's preaching in the wilderness of Judea. And the Bible says his message was, Repent ye, yeah. for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In other words, the kingdom of heaven is available to you. Okay. It's being offered to you. He said, well, this is he that was spoken by that old prophet Isaiah. That voice crying in the wilderness. John the Baptist is that voice that was crying in the wilderness. A voice crying and we're still crying it today. Prepare ye the way Amen. of the Lord. Amen. Make straight his paths. Hallelujah. John the Baptist would preach. He would see us preaching and hear us preaching. Uh, and the Pharisees and the Sadducees came to him one day while he was out yeah. there baptizing. Uh, and he looked at him and he said, Oh, generation of vipers. Uh, let me tell you, John the Baptist stood up with boldness. Uh, he didn't cut no corners. Uh, he didn't pull no punches. Uh, but God sent a man into the vineyard uh, and he declared this message. Uh, Prepare ye uh, the way of the Lord. Lord. He Amen. said in Matthew 3.10 that even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. He said every tree that brings forth not good fruit is going to be cut down and cast into the fire. He said I indeed baptize you with water but there's coming one 
Hallelujah. After me. He's mightier than I. He was before I was. But he's mightier than I. Whose shoes I'm not even worthy to stoop down and loose. He said he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And not only that, but his fan is in his hand. Hallelujah. And he's going to thoroughly purge his floor. And he's going to gather his wheat into the garner. And he's going to burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. God sent John the Baptist in as a messenger, as one of his servants into the vineyard. But what did they do? The old king chopped his head off and put it on a silver platter. And they killed him, they beat him, and they bruised him. Oh, but let me tell you, God said, I'm going to make a way. No matter how, no, it doesn't matter how bad and how evil, how wicked the people are, how bad they treat the word of God, how bad they treat the prophets, how bad they treat the preachers, I'm still going to make a way. And last of all, God set one, born of a virgin named Mary, the one whom we just celebrated a few weeks ago, the birth of the Savior, the Redeemer. Amen. God sent his son, last of all, into this earth. He sent him, hallelujah, not to change the law, law. He sent him to fulfill the law and all the law and everything of the prophets was fulfilled in this man, Jesus. And last of all, when the, when the message of the prophets had expired and the, and the law had went out, hallelujah, God sent his son in due time, born of a virgin, born under the law, made subject to the law. He was very man, but he was very God. And last of all, God sent his son to collect the debt, hallelujah. And when he came to this earth, he was rejected, he was spit upon, he was seized, he was beaten, he was bruised, but he was like a lamb led to the slaughter, and he never opened his mouth. They came and they ridiculed him, they mocked him, they set him down and they put a robe around him, they put a reed in his hand, and they put a crown of thorns upon top of his head, and after they got done seizing him and mocking him, and making fun of the Lord Jesus. They took that reed out of his hand and they smote him on top of his head, driving that crown of thorns deeper into his skull that the blood would pour forth. The Bible said he was beaten so bad that he was unrecognizable. You couldn't even tell who he was. He didn't look like that precious baby born in that manger. He didn't look like that precious child of Mary's. He was beaten so bad and swelled up and bruised that you couldn't recognize him. But he had to go through it, hallelujah. And he had to come. Glory to God. He came that you and I could be set free. The one who left the riches of heaven, left the glories of heaven. He left that celestial city and he came to this earth and by God's grace, he became poor that you and I could be rich. And last of all, God sent his son and he went to that cross and he became that final, ultimate, perfect sacrifice. That sacrifice that would triumph over the power of sin. And let me tell you this morning, God he destroyed the power of sin and its grip upon humanity some 2,000 years ago when that debt of sin was paid for. Hallelujah. At Calvary's cross and Jesus paid it when he said it is finished. Amen. Hallelujah. And he hung his head in the locks of his shoulders and the Bible said he gave up the ghost. Oh, let me tell you, it was there at the cross when I first saw the light and the burden of my heart. Thank God it was rolled away. It was there by my faith. I received my sight and now I'm joyous all the day long. I'm telling you, my friend, you won't find peace. You won't find satisfaction. You won't find joy and nothing in this world. You'll just keep going back and spending more and spending more for everything that 
that does not bring satisfaction. But today you can call upon the one who has already paid the price. It won't cost you anything. Hallelujah. But you can lay your life. Hallelujah. Yield your life to him and surrender all to him. And all song says, I surrender all. I surrender all. you got to count the cost this morning. Recognize what Jesus went through for you. Last of all, God sent his son. And the Bible says in Colossians chapter 2, Paul said that it was there at that cross that Jesus triumphed over the powers of darkness. Hallelujah. He conquered death. That third day when Jesus was raised up from the grave, up from the grave he arose. Triumphant over all of your foes. Let me tell you, my friend, he conquered the grave. He conquered death. Hallelujah. Now he destroyed the one who had the power of death. And he brought victory to those who all their life were subject to the fear of death. Jesus conquered it. Hallelujah. You don't have to live in fear today. As Brother Donnie says, you don't have to live in doubt today. You can have peace that passes all of your understanding. God made a way. Last of all, he sent his son uh, that you could be set free. Uh, and Colossians 2 said uh, he took the penalty of the law. Uh, you can try to live by the law if you want to. We've got a lot of people trying. Uh, you can try to live by every letter of the law. I think what you're going to find out uh, the more you live by trying to live by the law, Paul said it frustrates the grace of God. And the more you try to live by the law, the more sin will be evident in your life. Uh, and you're going to find that you're not perfect. You're going to find you can't keep no law. You can't keep no ordinance. And you're going to have to live. If you want to live by the law, you're going to have to live under the penalty of the law. Or you can accept that penalty. Jesus took it upon himself at Calvary's cross. And the penalty of the law, hallelujah, he took it out of the way. It was contrary to us. And he nailed it to his cross. He nailed the law to his cross cross and he triumphed over the powers of darkness and the Bible says he made a show of them openly Satan's been conquered and Jesus said in Revelation 1 18 I have the keys of hell and of death Jesus has authority I want to read one more thing to you this morning before we pray and give you an opportunity to know this man named Jesus that's who we're here presenting to you today Jesus said in Matthew 16 whom do men say that I am and Peter said some say you're Jeremiah some say you're another prophet you're this one you're that one Hallelujah. But let me tell you, it was last of all that God sent his son. And Peter made the great confession. He said, Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. I would ask you this morning, can you make that confession that he is the Christ, the son of the living God? Matthew 21, verse 42. Hallelujah. In our text, the Word of God says that Jesus said, Did you never read in the Scriptures? The stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. He said, This is the Lord's doing. In other words, last of all, He sent His Son. And Jesus said, It is marvelous in our eyes. Why? Because it's God's plan. He said, Therefore say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you. The kingdom of God was taken from Israel at that time. And it was given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. It was given to the church today. Hallelujah. God turned to the Gentiles. You and I today. And he's made a way. And he said, Whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken. He's speaking of judgment here. But on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to power. That's those who post Christ. Let me tell you something today. You don't want to stand in opposition to him. God has made he made every provision on his part for Israel to produce fruit of righteousness. But they failed. And today I want to 
tell you, God has a plan for you. God has made a way today that you can come to him in faith believing in that death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Paul said in Ephesians chapter 2, that we are saved by grace through our faith. Faith is that instrument that brings you into the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And today, no matter where you are, no matter where you've been, hallelujah, God loves you. And that's what we come by to tell you today. That God wants to save you. He wants to set you free. God loves you today. But let me say this to you. Even as much as God loves you, His love is not what saves you. Because God loves every single person on the face of this earth. But God cannot just open up the back door of heaven and let anybody in because He loves them. You've got to come through the door. You've got to come through the entrance. Jesus is that entrance into heaven. Jesus is that entrance into God's presence. Last of all, God sent His Son. And I would ask you today, can you believe in faith that Jesus came and He died this awful death? And by that blood that was shed at Calvary's cross, there's a new and a living way today. Can you believe that? And somebody said, well, I've been too bad. That's why Jesus came. He came to the worst of the worst. And he set everyone free that ever came to him. He's never turned not one away that ever called upon him. Today as we pray, it's as simple as this. You say, Lord, I realize today I'm a sinner. I realize today, Lord, that I'm trespassed. And I've transgressed your way. And I'm filthy, Lord. I'm filthy. But I'm coming to you today, Lord, asking you that you would forgive me of my sin and that you would cleanse me. And today, I'm repenting of my sin. I'm turning, Lord, and I'm turning from all of that old sin and I'm turning to you today with all of my heart. And Lord, I'm going to pick up that cross and I'm going to follow you daily. If you can come to him in that prayer and believe it in your heart, don't just pray it because somebody told you pray it with your heart believing it. And he'll save your soul today. As we pray, surrender all to him. Heavenly Father, we come before you today in Jesus' name. We thank you for your promises. We thank you for your word today. We thank you, God, that your word is forever settled in heaven. And that, God, you made this way of escape. You made a door of escape. And, Lord, you sent your Son. That, God, we can be set free from our sin. We can be set free from the slavery of sin. Lord, I don't know who may be calling upon you right now. I don't know who may be listening. But God, I'm sure in my spirit there are those that are listening that are bound by sin. And maybe some, Lord, with hot tears pouring down their cheek that they realize this morning that the way they've been going, Lord, is a way of defeat. It's a way of bondage. But God, through your word today, they realize that you are the only one who can set the captive free. And Lord, I pray that they're calling out for you today in faith believing. And Lord, that this is the day that their life is going to be changed forever. And we thank you and praise you for God today. And we love you with all that we have. God, we pray that, Lord, those that are being saved today, that, God, you would strengthen them and shield them from the vows of the devil who would try to plant doubt and fear in their mind. And today, from this day onward, they can live in victory.
Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we ask these things. Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. We're so glad today we had the opportunity to come to you, Brother Donnie and myself, and the Holy Spirit moving in our midst today. And the power of God going forth over the airwaves. We count it an honor and a privilege. We're not of anything of ourselves, but we know someone today who holds all power. And his name is Jesus. But we pray today you have a most blessed week in the Lord. And next week you're back in with us here on 99.1. And today, once again, we invite you out. We encourage you. Be somewhere in the house of God. Be somewhere where you can be fed the word of God and be strengthened in his power and might. We love you today. We pray God's richest blessings this week. And until then, on behalf of Brother Don and myself, we pray you have a most blessed week. Keep looking up. Your redemption is growing high.